Hello, I'm Charles Collingwood. This week, the Crosby brothers, Lindsay, Dennis, and Phil, have invited us to visit them person to person. Phil, how many would be here if all the Crosby family got together? That's quite a question. That's quite a question, uh, Charles. Let me think now. Uh, there would be dads too. His two young ones. There would be uh, the four of us. Denny has three children. I've got two, and uh, Barbara and Lenny have one. So if you got an adding machine, maybe you can figure that up. I'm not really sure. Lindsay, what has been the attitude of people toward you boys who have such a famous father? Well, I'd say for the most part, Charles, uh, it's been really, really a great experience. Of course, it's tough in the business that we've chosen because I think most people naturally think that uh, we're living off of his name or anything we do is because of his name. I hope you'll join me for a delightful half-hour visit this Friday night over most of these CBS television stations. host, Rual Dahl. How are you? Are you feeling tired and run down? Are your eyeballs muddy? Is your breath not quite so sweet as usual? And do you sometimes lack the pep to go out dancing all evening with your wife after a hard day at the office? If so, you should try my grandmother's famous tonic beverage, which she always referred to as snake water. She made it simply by disconnecting the rubber pipe from the gas ring in the kitchen and then bubbling the gas through a quart of beer for half an hour. Mind you, she never drank it herself. She gave it to my grandfather. And the effect was astonishing. The old man would at once become extremely exhilarated, singing songs and leaping over the furniture everywhere. But it killed him in a month. Some of you, of course, may not have gas in your home. You can, however, achieve roughly the same results by picking the wadding out of one of those benzedrine inhalers and soaking it for 12 hours in a tumbler of brandy. Your man will dance all night on that, but he'll be a wreck in the morning and a goner within the week. I have purposely refrained from talking about tonight's play for fear of giving away the plot. It's called Hush Hush by Bob Van Skoik, and it's way out. did it take to get out of the maze the last time? 53 seconds. Go. Look. Look, it, it doesn't have the slightest desire to get out of the maze now, not the slightest. She's completely tranquilized. It's sonic tranquilization. Professor Lidecker. Allow me, sir. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, William. You'll have to make an announcement now, sir. Oh, we're not ready to publish. Oh. But this is a major breakthrough, sir. At last, by the use of sound waves, the brain can be released from all pressures and, and false drives. Complete relaxation, utter tranquility. Well, I must admit, I'm, I'm rather pleased. When I think of the practical application, the same principle applied to nations. Professor, this could mean the end of war. She's so peaceful, so, so quiet. <laughs> but we, we mustn't be impatient, William. We, we still have lots of work to do. Yeah. Yeah, that little fella's taught us everything that he can. Now, bring on the next one, eh? Yes, sir. William, uh, William, you haven't taken my notebook again, have you? I had it here a minute ago. Could this be it, sir? Oh, thank you, thank you. Can I uh, get you anything from the commissary, Professor? Professor? Oh, 
Post Rogers. Um, Mrs. Lidecker, good afternoon. Is my husband in there? Oh, yes, yes, but he's awfully oh, busy. Oh, don't I... tell me he's busy. He was supposed to meet me for lunch an hour ago. We were at a crucial stage of the experiment. Oh, now he's got you making excuses for him. Let's see what he has to say. But, Mrs. Lidecker, I'm, I'm afraid you can't take the dog into the lab. I'd like to know why not. Hmm? Well, he might uh, disturb things. All right. Don't fret, Cupid. Mama's be right back. Well, Ernest, you have any idea what time it is? I am talking to you, Ernest. Oh, oh. Ah, Bernice. You have humiliated me for the last time. I am just not going to put up with it any longer. I am not going to. Oh, we were supposed to have lunch together. Do you realize how many hours I have spent waiting for you in restaurants? Well, I'm sorry. I was working. Oh, don't give me that. Your work isn't so important that you can't tear yourself away for lunch. David Ainsley is the vice president of a corporation, and he is never too busy to meet Margaret for lunch. Oh, she's as well organized. Yes. And it's high time you started pulling yourself together. You're wasting your life in this, this pig pen. Gosh, have you ever clean it up? Look at all this, 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 this junk! Please, don't, don't, don't touch anything. Look at you, with a button missing and a grease stain on your coat. Ernest, did you shave this morning? Well, I, I don't really know. You don't really know? Please, don't, don't raise your voice, Benny. What do you expect me to do? You have no consideration for me at all. You're slovenly and forgetful and... Margaret Ainsley tells me how well David is doing, I could just die. When are you ever going to get anywhere? There's a lot of delicate sound equipment in here. I now beg you to me. Be... I have invited the Ainsleys over for dinner tonight. Now, you can learn a lot from a successful man like David Ainsley. Well, if you think so. Margaret says that David has more responsibility than the president of the corporation. Margaret says that David's bonus will be larger than your salary this year. Margaret even says Margaret says a lot, doesn't she? Cocktails at 7.30. Please come home in time to dress. Well, I, I am sorry about lunch. Just once in your life, Ernest, be on time. Where's Cupid Doll? I had to uh, give him to one of the students to take him outside. He was barking. <laughs> To tell Mrs. Uh, my dad get the good news? The good news. About the success of your experiment. Oh, no, no, I forgot. Oh, well, that looks like a fine, healthy young specimen. Well, you ready to go into a state of euphoria, are you? <laughs> well, you better get your gloves for this one, will you? <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> he can use some calming down. <laughs> Here you go, Buster. Now, take it easy. <laughs> A completely altered personality, as docile as a kitten. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to get on to the next series of tests. That's, that's 14B, it's reaction to stimuli various. It's getting late, Professor. You've had a long day. I know, we're so close, I don't like to stop now. But you need the rest. Even a chimpanzee can't go on indefinitely. Yeah, I suppose you're right, William. As usual, I've lost all track of time. <laughs> so she can wait till morning, all right? <laughs> Good Lord, well, what time is it exactly? Quarter past 11. Listen, you put the animal away. I'll lock up here. I've, I've got to get home. Yes, sir. Here we go, Buster. You can't possibly give me an excuse this time. I forgot. You had no right to forget. We waited dinner for you until 9.30. The evening was ruined. Naturally, there's no telephone in this place. I couldn't call you. I couldn't reach you. It was so damn frustrating. And I'm sure the Ainsleys will forgive me. Yes, but I won't. It's bad enough to be married to a man who doesn't care about anything important like money. This is important. It's world peace through peace of mind. Stop it. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't care. I'm talking about my experiment is nearly done. Yes, but there'll be another one, and another one after that, and another one after that. You'll spend more and more time in this horrible place, and we'll lose all our friends. We'll never be able to entertain or have people over to the house. Or... Bernice, Bernice, I've almost finished the control test. You don't know what that means, do you? Yes! means you care more about your stupid experiments than you care about me. I hate your yes. experiments! I hate your stupid laboratory! I hate this filthy place on this mountain! I hate it! I hate it! I love you! I just like a guy
Thank you, my dear. That smile is worth everything. You know, Bernice, you're, you're a different woman. You're the girl I married. I'm at peace with the world. It's a wonderful feeling, Ernest. I think this is the beginning of something wonderful for both of us. Do you mind if I read? Oh, no, Ernest, I don't mind. <laughs> I always used to annoy you. What you do that for? It's much too loud. Nicer this way. Cupid, I must have heard you. You know how he is. He'll go on barking for hours. He always seems to bark at bedtime. quiet now. It's nice to have everything so peaceful. Yes. Everything quiet. Hi, he's Johnny Wayne. He's Frank Schuster. We'd like to tell you something about our new series, Holiday Lodge, which can be seen on most of these CBS television stations on Sunday nights. And uh, this show has a lot of surprises. It's really different. For instance, it does not take place in the 20s. <laughs> and it isn't underwater. <laughs> there is no violence in it. <laughs> and it has absolutely no talking animals. What it does have, of course, is Wayne and Schuster. Wayne and Schuster? Maybe we better get a singing cat. It really is a shame Ernest couldn't tear himself away from the laboratory last night. David was so disappointed. He wanted to hear all about experimental psychology. David has such a keen mind. He's interested in everything. But we know the college expects Ernest to keep busy. He's not his own master the way David is. So please, Bernice, please don't be upset because the evening was a shambles. I'm not upset, Margaret. Good. That's the spirit. You know, I called you several times this morning. I simply couldn't get through. I told the operator I thought something was wrong with your telephone. Ha! I was right. Dead as a dodo. What? What 
What on earth? It kept on ringing. But the wire's been cut. It just wouldn't stop. Oh, then it was out of order. Well, I'll telephone the phone company just as soon as I get home and tell them to come fix it. Oh, please, don't bother. It's no trouble, for heaven's sake. You can't live without a telephone. Bernice, you seem unusually quiet this morning. Do you feel all right? I've never felt better in my life. Well, that's good. I think it's stuffy in here. Why don't I get in some fresh air? I don't see how you can stand it. Ah, David says we don't breathe deeply enough. David's kept himself in condition by breathing properly and exercising. He feels so sorry for poor Ernest because he's beginning to show his age so. You'd never suspect David was a day over 35. David hasn't gained a pound in 16 years. His old uniform still fits him perfectly. David was a lieutenant colonel, the youngest in the army. Ah! There you are. Were you alone? I thought Margaret Ainsley was going to come by. She kept on talking. Now she's gone. You're not angry with me, are you, Ernest? Well, of course I'm not. I'm glad she's gone. I hope she stays away. <laughs> Here, for the perfect wife. Oh, how lovely. Thank you, Ernest. Well, uh, shouldn't you put them in water? Can't. The pipes rattle. The pipes rattle? Well, I'll have to speak to the janitor about that. Bernice, I've come home to have lunch with you. That's surprising, isn't it? I thought about it at breakfast, and it did not slip my mind. <laughs> Bernice! What have you done? It was too loud. I made it quiet. But it, it's always been that loud. It's been chiming like that for 15 years. I couldn't bear it. But this, this senseless destruction, I, I don't understand. It interfered with my peace of mind. Interfered? Yes, I had to stop the telephone, too. And the refrigerator, it made such a racket, Ernest. What did you do to the refrigerator? It won't bother us anymore. Bernice, the landlord owns the refrigerator. If you've harmed that, we're going to have to pay for it. I'm sorry, Ernest. You know, we, we just can't go around destroying things because they, they make loud noises. Now, you've... Cupid doll, the dog, I, I haven't seen it this morning. Cupid. Cupid, Cupid doll. Cupid. Cupid doll, here, 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 Cupid. Bernice, when the dog was barking last night, how did you quiet him? I forgot the doorbell. Oh, oh, Mr. Jensen, if, if you've come about the refrigerator, I'll, I'll have it repaired. I don't know nothing about the refrigerator. Oh, Miss Leidecker, that was bad news about that friend of yours. Got badly hurt in an accident. Who's had an accident? Mrs. Leidecker's friend. The one who was just here. What are you talking about? Well, it looks like she fell. She, she, she fell out of a window. Anyhow, she's dead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Thank you very much. It's Margaret. Margaret. Phil. Professor, I, I thought you'd gone to lunch. Anything wrong? Something we forgot. There must, there must be some way to reverse the process. But... Why would we want to do that? Well, in case of error, some harmful side effect of the tranquilizer. We've examined the subject thoroughly, unless uh, something new has turned up. No, 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 but 
We don't know yet what effect sonic tranquilization might have on the human mind, do we? Well, no, we can't tell that until we experiment, but that's far in the future. Sound waves penetrating right into the human brain, reacting on the nervous system. Some, some serious aversion might be caused. Mm. Well, that's an interesting hypothesis, but I don't quite see where it's leading us. William, I'm going to have to continue alone for a while. I, I won't need you. Alone? But, Professor, No, we... no, just, just take the time off now. Just to take the next day or two, I'll, I'll call you when I need you. But we have a whole series no, no, of... No, just go, go immediately. Leave me alone! Yes, if you say so. What happened was Mrs. Ainsley must have walked down the stairs instead of using the elevator. Now, the windows were open on the landings, huh? Now, she tripped. Maybe she caught her heel did a header and pow, she fell to the sidewalk. Unless you have reason to think it was not an accident. She kept on talking. You mean, you mean she told you something? Oh, many things. I, I couldn't bear to listen. Yeah, what did she talk about? Her husband, David this, David that. Yeah, what did she tell you about him? He has a keen mind. He felt inadequate, huh? What else? He's his own master. Gave her a hard time, huh? That figures. Anything else? He keeps himself in shape. The same old story. Another woman. Say, maybe she didn't start down the stairs, huh? Maybe she went up to the roof. D did she seem despondent, act, act a little nervous, a little jittery? She just kept on talking. She talked herself into it. Well, fa uh, thank you, Mrs. Lattica. You've been a big help. Listen, I'll just uh, call my man downstairs now and go right up to the roof. Uh, is it okay if I use your phone? It isn't working. Well, gee, uh, you ought to have it fixed in, in case of an emergency. Never mind. I'll, I'll get it. Not necessary. I'll, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Who are you? I'm I'm her husband. Oh, Professor Leidecker. Well, your wife's already wised me up. Then you you know how it all came about. Well, yes, yeah, suicide. Well, we appreciate your cooperation, Mrs. Leidecker. You, you've uh, made a job a lot easier for us. You're welcome. Well, thanks, folks. Well, is that all? Are you leaving? Well, no, no I, I won't need you folks anymore. Thanks again. So long. Goodbye, officer. Come again. Bernice, I... I understand everything. It's my fault entirely. I, I didn't know what effect it would have. The whole world's full of noise. You, you simply cannot cope with it. Not this way. But I'm happy the way I am, Ernest. I don't want to change. But you must change. Now come back to the laboratory with me, and I'll, I'll try to neutralize it somehow. You don't know how happy I am, Ernest. There's never been such happiness before. Now, come with me, Bernice. Trust me, I, I want to help you. No, I don't need any help. Everything's perfectly beautiful. Please, I, I beg of you. No. Come with me. I, I made a dreadful mistake. I have to correct it. I... Shh. The ease with which the average person can be hypnotized, providing he cooperates, of course, was well demonstrated last year in a certain European country. There, a famous hypnotist appeared on television and invited his audience to let itself be put to sleep. Within five minutes, about 20 million people were in a deep trance. And the hypnotist went on to say to them, I forbid you to wake up unless I personally give you the order. 
The bounder then walked off the set and demanded a huge sum of money from the network to bring them round. The network was panic-stricken and paid up. But since then, nobody has ever been allowed to use hypnotism upon a television audience, except, of course, the producers. We'll have another one for you next week at the same time. Good night and sleep well. Start fresh with l &M. Stay fresh with l &M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with l &M. That's all it takes. An l and a light, and you unlock a new world of fresh smoking pleasure. You do away with dried out taste for good. The secret flavor seal. L&M's special way of moisturizing tobacco to seal in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. L&M burns slower, smokes cooler. So try fresh tasting, best tasting L&M with a modern miracle tip. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. Pack or box. Makeup created by Dick Smith. Hairstyles by Ernest Adler. This is Rod Serling, your guide for a unique odyssey in the Twilight Zone, next on most of these stations. This program was pre-recorded. Paul Tremaine speaking. Try to picture this country without scientists, doctors, engineers, lawyers, and other highly trained people. It's entirely possible that we will have a serious shortage of these professional people in the not-too-distant future. For without enough qualified college professors and college facilities, we just can't train enough of our young people. The fact is that right now, today, many of our colleges are sadly overcrowded. The situation may soon be drastic. In 10 years, we'll need many more professors, classrooms, laboratories, and libraries. Let's make sure our children are given the best possible college training. For further information about the college crisis, write to Higher Education, Box 36, Times Square Station, New York, 36, New York. Help the college of your choice. <laughs>